Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hey everyone, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Uh, let me start off by thanking uh, one of our viewers, Rich Rosel, for pointing out the fact that my mix wasn't very good on two of our shows, and he's very astute for noticing this. Some of you may have and just didn't think to point it out, but Rich did, and I appreciate it. Some of the episodes, 31 and 37 specifically, um, my voice was only coming in the left channel, and um, basically it's because I was a little careless. I didn't press a button or actually check a box in my software that mixes the recording that's only on the left channel in their software into mono and that's what happens so i apologize and that's some of the shows i don't wear headphones i just like the variety of not having to wear them all the time if i'm just going to talk and not actually do any playback and uh, so i mix it up sometimes that's why sometimes i'm wearing headphones sometimes i'm not i've used different microphones it's for me it's more fun to experiment and let you guys see the results of what i'm doing so anyway thanks again rich for pointing that out uh, this week's question came in from Dave DeAndrea. Dave writes, Hi, George. You were very helpful as a consultant when I built my studio a couple of years ago. As you may recall, it was built in my garage. Everything is dialed in and sounding great, but even with the double walls and insulation, I'm still hearing some low-frequency outside noises like trucks, cars, airplanes, and the occasional lawnmower if it's one of my close neighbors. Fortunately, I live in a pretty quiet, low traffic area and they sound, the sounds are very faint, but just enough to potentially ruin a good take, or I occasionally have to wait for them to pass before I can continue a session. I'm not sure if these sound vibrations are coming from the concrete slab flooring of the garage or through the outside walls or both. There's not much I can do if either of those are the culprit, apart from rebuilding from scratch. Is there anything more I can do to eliminate these sounds in real time, or am I at the mercy of messing with the EQ in post? I keep telling my wife that the next house we buy is going to have to have a deep underground bomb shelter that I can convert it to a studio. Not as easy to come by in Oregon. Thanks and God bless. All right, Dave. Well, I have to say that you are going to have to revert to some sort of processing, either pre or post, to deal with these sounds. But depending on what frequencies these sounds occur, is going to determine what means you need to use to eliminate them. So um, the best case scenario for you is that the sounds are truly of a very low frequency nature. That would mean anything below, say, 80 hertz. That would kind of fall into the category of rumble. So that's really low frequency stuff that's just below or way below the, the range of your voice. If that's the case, those are relatively easy to deal with by simply applying a high pass filter. If you add EQ, that rolls off low frequency noise above a certain point, you can get rid of it quite easily just by EQing that stuff out of there. Not a big deal. And almost every studio I've ever been in at all levels of budgets have had some degree of rumble issues unless they were sometimes, you know, million dollar plus facilities. So even my proudest studios have some level of low frequency noise that come in. Um, but again, you have to figure out where is the frequency band of the noise. So to do that, you either have to use what's called an RTA, a real-time analyzer software, and look at where the frequencies of the noise are and just record some of that noise as, say, room tone, and then play it back. Or you're just going to have to send it to someone that can analyze it for you and help you figure out where those frequencies are. Um, but either way, once you figure out where the frequencies are, then you can figure out what's going to be the right solution. So again, if it's low, below 80 or 90 hertz, high-pass filter, pretty much a done deal. If it comes up higher in the frequency band above 80 hertz and starts to creep into the range of your actual voice, then it becomes more of a problem. So there, you, you might be able to find specific frequencies, but if it's passing vehicles, those sounds tend to come and go and change in pitch as they go by. They're usually not exactly one frequency the whole time. And if that's the case, those can be really hard to deal with because they change pitch over time. If they are just sort of one pitch most of the time, just sort of a dull, you can figure out what that pitch is and then notch it out using a parametric equalizer in your software. And that can be pretty effective at removing sounds that sort of resonate and ring and are of a fixed frequency. 
But those sounds that are of changing frequency as a vehicle goes by, like that kind of thing, those are very hard to deal with. I'm guessing by the fact that you're saying lawnmower sounds get in, that it may be a higher frequency than I'd like it to be. So if that's the case, and short of rebuilding the room, there's not much you're going to be able to do about some of those sounds. Depending on the kind of work you're doing, you might be able to use a, a properly set up noise gate. Um, in extreme cases, if you have to save a take, you could use um, Adobe Audition CS6 or something that has spectral editing. And you can actually go in and select a range of sound that changes over time and actually remove a sound that's changing in pitch. Actually, uh, Adobe Audition CC, the newest Creative Cloud version, can actually remove sound that changes in pitch over time because you can paint out a whole range of sound. And um, I'll, I'll embed a little clip of a video maybe in here so you can see how that works. That's really much all you're going to be able to do. It, it just means that some crucial parts of the construction process were not quite done correctly and um, you are getting some noise transmission that's likely coming in through the, the concrete slab or airborne noise that's coming in the outside wall and being trans more, transmitted into the structure than into the interior wall. If you want to figure out really where it's coming in, use a stethoscope or just put your ear with a glass, a drinking glass, and put it up against the wall and move it around and find where the sound is the loudest. Maybe it's the loudest at the floor, maybe at the wall, maybe it's the loudest in the middle of the wall, maybe it's the loudest at the edge. You can even go outside the studio and put it to the concrete slab and see if it's coming through there. Um, that's probably the least likely situation, the slab. It's most likely probably airborne noise coming into the structure from the outside, then being transmitted through what we call flanking into the interior structure. So that kind of thing is very difficult to, to repair after the fact. So um, try those things out, experiment with your EQs, and um, worst case scenario, send some samples my way. And we'll work on it together. And maybe we can find some post-processing tools that will fix it reliably for you. So thanks for sending in your question, Dave. If anybody else has questions you'd love to have answered on the show, send them in at widomsworld at edgestudio.com. And I'll be glad to answer them in a future episode. And if you want any one-on-one -on -one support, tech support, Twisted Wave stacks, Adobe Audition, processing racks, anything you can imagine, all that stuff's available over at vostudiotech.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys next week.